The episode starts in a battlefield where we meet a villainous man with purple aura flowing around him, against a heroic guy known as the great hero who is holding a sword and a small pebble. The villain man is holding a massive rock with his purple aura and throws it towards his enemy. The great hero throws the pebble with full force and manages to counteract the force of the massive rock with the immense power that the rock was thrown at. After that they draw their swords and face each other for a fight. They charge at each other with full power and have an intense fight which ends with a scene of the battlefield. Then both of them are shown barely standing and fighting with the last bit of energy that they have and both of them stab each other in the body resulting in both of them falling on the ground and bleeding. The heroic guy seems to be happy when he dies and say it's finally over. It cuts to a scene of a castle-like building and a bunch of teenagers in similar uniforms walking and greeting each other. A boy in a black and white uniform which is different from the blue and white uniform everyone is wearing starts talking about how excited he is to live life as an ordinary person. The castle-like building seems to be a school, and the boy is walking and greeting everyone as he is very excited to make new friends. He introduces himself as Blade to all the other students. But then suddenly comes the Empress, the top student in the school. Everyone seems scared of her but Blade goes up to her and introduces himself in the same excited manner that he did to everyone else. But the Empress seems upset and the students at the back try to explain to her that he is a new student. Blade says that he does not care about being a hero but only to make friends which upsets the Empress. Blade then asks Empress to take him to the headmaster's office and she takes him there. They enter the big beautiful office where the headmaster is sitting behind his table with a smirk on his face. But the headmaster seems to have changed. The Empress panics and bows before the new headmaster in shock. Blade starts talking to him but then the Empress stops him and apologizes on his behalf to the new headmaster which is the king. The king asks the Empress to leave him and Blade alone together and tells Blade to regain his powers as a hero. It seems like Blade and the king know each other. Blade refuses to regain his powers and wants to live a normal life. It seems like that Blade was the great hero from the beginning and the king believes that the great hero has been resurrected in Blade. Afterwards Blade meets up with the Empress in the advanced training session where he manages to impress the Empress with his extraordinary powers and sword skills which leaves the Empress in absolute shock. This makes the Empress suspicious of Blade as he is so powerful, but Blade panics and tells everyone that he is just an ordinary guy. During lunch Blade tells the Empress that they are friends which makes her happy. Later in her bedroom we get to find out how the Empress laid hands on a demonic sword when she was only 6 years old, and this demon has been trying to take over her but has not succeeded thanks to her resistance. Later on during training when the other students are sparring with the Empress, everyone notices how she is suddenly acting more aggressive and different. She keeps going until she suddenly drops her sword and falls unconscious, but Blade manages to catch her in time. In the hospital the doctor tells Blade that she is under a spell. The Empress insists on leaving and after tells Blade to not tell anyone about what the doctor said. Later that night, Blade goes to a futuristic looking room and does some research on the Empress's sword and finds out the truth. He goes to talk to the Empress and she explains everything about the sword to him. He encourages the Empress to fight the demon and take ownership of the sword which is the only solution to stop the urges of the demon. Blade tells the Empress that he will cut the demon if it manages to take over her and manifest itself through her body. At night she summons the demon to take ownership of the sword and the entire place is lit up by the fire from the sword. She enters a new world and meets the demon and they start fighting until the Empress comes out victorious and in ownership of the sword. The second episode starts off in the advanced level training session, where the Empress tells Blade to go and have an eye on Sophie's training. The Empress noticed that Sophie acted differently around Blade as she introduced herself without anyone asking her. So the Empress thought he would be suited to watch over her training and for them to get to know each other. Blade goes over and talks to Sophie. He tells her that he wants to help her improve her sword skills since she has never used a sword before and fights barehand. Sophie was in doubt at first as she has been fighting barehand her whole life. But she finally agreed to let Blade teach her how to master sword skills. As Blade was about to start teaching Sophie about swords, the training session ended. But both of them decided to continue and Sophie started training with Blade's sword while supervised her training. Sophie and Blade practice until sunset, and by then Sophie has mastered the sword and manages to cut through the enchanted metal armor easily. Blade is surprised by how fast Sophie has managed to learn sword skills. Sophie asks Blade if she can now beat the Empress since she mastered how to use a sword now. Sophie suddenly tackles Blade down and mounts on him. She gets close to him and tells him that she wants to learn something new from him tomorrow. Blade gladly accepts. The next morning Blade is at the king's office talking to him about how school is going. Blade seems to have a grumpy attitude when talking to the king about his school life and his new friends. He tells the king that he has several friends now but he has been. The king seems a bit sad when he heard that Blade has taken an interest in Sophie. The king starts talking about the artificial great hero project. 
The king informs Blade about a group possessing ancient knowledge that was lost. This group selected a human as a basis and endeavored to bestow upon her the powers of the esteemed hero artificially. They replicated the basis to conduct numerous experiments and modifications in order to create an artificial great hero. Sophie's true identity is Sophisha Femto. She represents the twelfth replica of the original human named Sophisha. Being an experimental subject, she endured being treated as an object for a prolonged period of time. The king took her under his wing and Sophie regarded every statement directed towards her as a command. Blade runs out of the office and starts feeling guilty because Sophie was robbed of an ordinary life to create an artificial copy of the great hero, Blade. Now Blade wants to make sure that Sophie gets back her ordinary life as a normal human as he feels that it's his fault and his existence that caused her tragic life. But Blade himself doesn't know what a normal life seems like. So Blade starts to go around asking different people what the normal life of a young person like Sophie and himself seems like. Everyone gives different answers, and Blade goes into a cycle of questioning people's answers. This keeps going until he realizes he must take Sophie on a date. Sophie agrees to go on a date with Blade, but now the Empress knows about their date and decides to stalk them with two other girls to figure out what is happening. Sophie and Blade meet up and start their date off. The Empress gets upset that Blade and Sophie are walking arm in arm. Blade and Sophie go to many different places and spend time together while the Empress and her friends are stalking them everywhere they go. The Empress is sad that they are having a great time together. Blade and Sophie spend time together until night. When they are sitting by a fountain by themselves, Sophie decides to tell Blade the truth about herself since they are friends now and need to be honest with each other. Sophie tells Blade that she is not a normal person and she is an experimental subject who was freed by the king. Sophie shows Blade her powers and tells him she doesn't have full control over her artificial great hero powers. Blade also decides to tell Sophie that he is the great hero and opens up to her about his feelings when he can't save everyone and how he didn't ask to be the great hero. Sophie comforts Blade and helps him move on from his past. They hold hands and promise each other to keep these secrets to themselves. Blade and his friends have lunch in the cafeteria. Ernest noticed that Blade had food all over his face, prompting Sophie to kindly help clean him up. This act of kindness from Sophie made Ernest feel a bit jealous. Their lunchtime routine was interrupted when some new friends approached and asked to join their group. They all sat together, and Blade found himself at the center of attention when one of the girls asked for his opinion on their outfits. This was a bit confusing for Blade, but Ernest jumped in and congratulated the new friends for their advancement in class, creating more confusion for Blade. The new students explained that only top-ranked students could dress as they pleased, which helped clear things up a bit. The conversation was then interrupted by Ernest, who mentioned that the king was bringing a magical beast to the school for training enhancement. However, Blade seemed uninterested, referring to the king as an old man. Suddenly, the ground shook, causing panic among the students. Sophie suggested seeking shelter, but Blade took action, holding his lunch plate as he approached the source of the commotion. To everyone's astonishment, they discovered a dragon. Blade cautiously approached the dragon, which surprisingly moved closer to him. While Ernest was ready for a fight, Sophie stopped her, and Blade astounded everyone by leaping into the air and knocking the dragon down with a single punch, ordering it to sit. Ernest couldn't fathom how Blade had achieved this. Blade explained that the dragon was young and probably scared, which explained its non-hostile behavior. He even fed it by tossing his plate into its mouth, although the dragon found the food too spicy. The students were amazed by Blade's ability to calm the dragon with a single punch. Blade downplayed his feet, but no one believed him. As they were contemplating this, the dragon suddenly began to shine. Ernest drew Blade's attention to something behind him, and he saw a little girl who jumped onto him, calling him father. Blade was taken aback, but the girl insisted she had been looking for him. He agreed to help her find her parents, but her insistence on calling him father puzzled him. The girl brushed off his questions, impressed by his punch. The decision was made to let Blade take care of her, and while they bathed her, he named her Ku. Ku asked about her name, and Blade explained that it was inspired by a strong knight known for keeping promises. Ernest's interruption during the bath led to some awkwardness. The next day, Ku continued to stay with Blade, sitting on his lap and requesting to be fed. This behavior surprised the other students. Ku even asked for a good morning kiss from Blade, leading to questions from the other girls. Blade denied any romantic involvement, and Ku playfully mentioned that Blade spent time looking at mature female bodies. This led to an awkward confrontation with the other students, including the boys. As a result, Blade was left to train alone, as both the girls and boys suspected him of some wrongdoing. Ernest reassured their classmates not to worry about Blade. However, Ku's feelings of exclusion led her to leave the group. Blade tried to call her back, but she had already disappeared. He eventually found her, feeling down, and asked her what was wrong. 
Haku deflected the question, saying she was hungry, and they went for some curry. After their meal, Blade watched Ku fall asleep. Later, Ernest explained to Blade that dragons go through a tough upbringing, as their parents test their strength. This upbringing was the reason Ku behaved the way she did. She had been alone since birth, and Blade couldn't pretend to be her father for much longer. Blade, however, worried that Ku would end up truly alone and asked if Ernest knew how painful it was to be alone. Ernest realized Blade's sincerity in taking care of Ku and shared their concerns with Sophie, who had been eavesdropping. Ernest and Sophie were concerned for Blade, but he assured them that things were going well with Ku. The girls returned to avoid sparking scandalous rumors. However, when Blade entered his room, Ku was not there. He found her on the roof, looking at the moon, which she saw as a symbol of a parent and child. Ku explained that dragons didn't need friends as they saw themselves as stronger than humans, both physically and mentally. They lived and died alone, and all she needed was her parent, Blade. The next day, Blade attempted to have the king look after Ku, but it didn't go as planned. The king frightened Ku, causing her to run off, leaving Blade frustrated. In his room, Blade heard Ku's voice and found her playing with toys, acting out a drama. Blade noticed that each toy represented a personality from one of his friends, and Ku's play portrayed Blade seeking friendship for her sake. Ku mentioned names of students that Blade had never talked to, which turned out to be the students they passed by while walking around. The toy version of Blade stated that his daughter had made 108 friends. This made Blade realize that Ku secretly wished for friends, even though she claimed she didn't. Regretfully, he walked away, feeling he hadn't noticed this earlier. Ernest approached Blade, offering to help search for Ku, but she was shocked when Blade started banging his head against the wall repeatedly. She stopped him and asked what was wrong. Blade explained that it was difficult for Ku to make friends because dragons didn't see weaker beings as equals. To become Ku's friend, they would have to defeat her in a fight, and Blade felt powerless to help her find the friendship she desired. Ernest encouraged Blade to rely on others and not shoulder everything alone. They approached the lower class students, asking for their assistance in helping Ku make friends. Blade spoke about Ku's desire for friendship and asked for their help. Although the students knew they couldn't defeat a dragon, Blade begged them to become Ku's friends, pleading on his knees. Ernest and the remaining S-class students joined in the plea. Eventually, the students agreed to help Ku make friends. The next day, everyone gathered in the arena, awaiting Ku's arrival. She appeared in her dragon form, and Blade chose not to participate in the fight. He even told Ku it would be okay if she defeated the king, much to the king's dismay. Blade patted Ku's head and mentioned that she couldn't fight when captured in a trap. But this time, there were no traps, and she could show everyone her strength. Ku's battle began, and her ability to make friends became the focus of the day. Ku unleashed her fiery breath and tail attacks. The students panicked and started running away. But Ernest, armed with a broken sword, struck Ku and reminded the students of their plan. They regrouped, surrounded Ku, and dodged her tail strikes, allowing the ranged weapon squad to attack. Blade, one of the students, was excited that the plan seemed to be working, and even the king enjoyed the show. Ernest ordered the long-range squad to attack when the other squad retreated. The students combined their attacks from all sides, impressing the king's secretary with their teamwork. However, they soon realized that regular attacks couldn't harm a dragon. Worried, Blade and the students faced a tough battle against Ku, who wasn't holding back. Some students called for help, while others prepared escape plans. Ku unleashed her fire breath to the fullest, making the situation dire. But Blade recognized an opportunity, and Sophie and Ernest attacked Ku, causing some damage. Still, it wasn't enough to secure victory. Blade then revealed that they had been stalling for time, as Leonard had been digging a hole during the battle to set a trap. The king realized their strategy but knew it wouldn't be enough to win. The students charged forward, and Ku attempted to stop them with fire. Ernest used her Asmodeus sword again, and Leonard joined the fight, but Ku's scales proved impenetrable. Ku flirted with Ernest, but she was focused on the battle. Ku tried to escape by flying, and Ernest attacked to force her down. Sophie used her gravity manipulation skill to pin Ku down. The king and Blade realized this was the right moment to turn the tide of the battle. The exhausted students, led by Ernest, unleashed a powerful attack on Ku, causing a massive explosion. Ku returned to her human form, exhausted and traumatized. She teared up, feeling like she had lost. But Blade consoled her, explaining that her defeat wasn't a sign of weakness, it was just that humans were stronger. Ku accepted her defeat and expressed her willingness to be friends with everyone. In the aftermath, the king, impressed by his students' growth, decided to incorporate virtual reality magic into their training. The students had become close friends with Ku and even shared meals together. Blade, however, noticed a change in Ernest. When he pointed it out, it upset her, and she retreated to her room, overeating in despair. Blade, feeling guilty for his comment, sought to make amends. The other students tried to mediate the situation and comfort Ernest, who was struggling with her weight gain. Blade attempted to apologize but only made things worse. They turned to Leonard for advice on how to handle the situation. He offered to pay for a restaurant bill to cheer her up 
but Blade, learning from him, decided to be more flirtatious. Despite their efforts, Ernest remained upset. Ernest wanted to lose weight and asked Blade for help. She handed him a sword and explained her plan to use a magic protected testing ground to achieve her weight loss goal. Blade promised to praise her if she succeeded. Ernest channeled all her power into the sword, and it consumed her body in a burst of flames. Their friends noticed the fire and gathered around, supporting her. The fire subsided, and Ernest's body was slim again, but she now had horns and black eyes, and her underwear was made of fire. Asmodeus, a demon, had temporarily taken over her body and threatened to destroy the world. However, Ernest persuaded the demon that she had only given up her body fat, not her body itself, for the sake of her diet. The demon realized its form consumed too much energy and agreed to leave. Ernest transformed into a beastly form before Blade used his wind power to restore her to normal. The students returned to their normal lives, but when they visited Ernest's room, they discovered she was once again indulging in food. Though, Ku was helping her. How was the video? We hope it was good. If so, please check these videos. Also, please comment down your thoughts and your suggestions for future videos. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing now to show the support to our channel. We hope to see you soon with another video right in this channel. Have a nice day.